Hi, I'm James McPartland, and I'm a results leader. You're listening to ResultsLeader.fm. Being a thought leader is easy. Getting results is hard. This show is for the results leader who lives and dies by their results. Here is your host and chief results leader, Jonathan Rivera. You are listening to the only show on the internet dedicated to results. We are shining the spotlight on the men and women who are getting results for their clients. That's why we say thought leadership is easy. Results leadership is hard today. We are joined by keynote speaker, executive coach, leadership expert, and all-around enlightened fella, Mr. James McPartland. Let's jump in. James, my man, welcome to the show. Are you ready to rock this thing? Jonathan, my voice is in your hands. (laughs) I've never had somebody's voice in my hands, so this should be fun. Let's uh, give our listeners a quick win. What book have you given most as a gift? I appreciate that question. Seems that there's a trend here. I was asked that quite recently and and I struggled with it. Out of the gate, I had given people a book that impacted me quite a a bit. Maybe many of it know now called The Alchemist, Paulo Coelho. And that led to maybe there are two other books, Power of Your Subconscious Mind, which I read when I was in college about what we were capable of. Some work I've done in the world of neuroscience by Joe Dispenza. And yet I would tell you that fast forward to today, the book I'm giving most often, which requires a bit more courage, is a book I wrote. I don't tell this for your audience to say, hey, let me tell you about my book. But what it does, that stream of books gave me the confidence to share more of me, to be who I was afraid up against. I'm concerned of who people will think I am. And it's a story about a guy who forever in pursuit of the brass ring almost loses everything he has because he doesn't realize what he does have. And I figured if I was going to cultivate relationships, maybe I start by giving, telling a little bit about me, and that might you know, entice someone to share a little bit about them. So I'm humbled to say mine, and maybe it's because I have inventory. What's the name though? You got to give us the title. Yeah. Let me pull one off of a, a shelf. So the book is Unopened Gifts. Unopened Gifts. So I need gratitude. Excellent. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the vulnerability there. Tell us a story. I want you to think back. It's story time now. Tell us a story of how an apparent failure set you up for later success. How long was this broadcast? (laughs) Not all your failures. (laughs) (laughs) Compare scars. Yeah. Yeah, man. And and maybe like many have experienced where the great lessons come. For me, they've certainly been in the setbacks. I've been very blessed with those. (laughs) <laughs> Let's say those gifts. <laughs> and maybe, you know, one that comes to mind as you ask the question is having gone through the journey of a divorce. In my type A journey at one point in time to set the world on fire, I was running an exercise equipment business that a couple of partners and I had. And look, it was all about me. I had my Superman capes and I was out to make things happen. And I didn't make time for the people that were closest to me, in this particular case, uh, my wife. And I, maybe like lessons come, I think I had to learn. I had to learn the hard way that relationships are the most valuable currency that we have. Quite candidly, if I'm to be fair to you and to your listeners, I was married to a woman who gave me something that I had never experienced before given my upbringing, and that was lots of love. And over time, I didn't know how to handle it because the story I had inside of me is I didn't deserve it. So probably what was most instructive was going through a divorce to recognize that it's probably not her, it's probably me. If I'm really honest with you, whoever I was married to had to be married to me which I thought was a gift at one point in time. (laughs) So I've had to learn, you know, maybe as some of us do over time, a a relationship, a place you go to give, not to get. So that pain was quite instructive for me. Man, I want you guys to listen back to that. A a relationship is where you go to give, not to get. That is powerful. That is powerful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Now let's talk about investments. I'm curious to know what is the most worthwhile investment that you have ever made? Aside from being on your podcast? Hey, we'll take it. (laughs) Appreciate that. I certainly can teach people how to make a million dollars by starting with 10 million, right? Share with you that 
while there have been some monetary things that have made a difference for me, I won't be the first person to say this or maybe anything that comes out by virtue of how I interpret it is. But the courage to invest in my own personal growth and development sort of intimated this in some of our talking points in my early upbringing as I was brought into the world. An unintended outcome of that, or maybe an intended outcome, was I was taught to believe that I had very little to contribute to the world, called as a mistake. And you know, you carry that, that voice of the adults in your life as you're a little one. I carried that for a long time from the perspective of, I thought, outrunning that voice, success, material things, big company, fancy cars, suits, the stuff. Well, I'll prove them wrong. And it was probably the um, interactions of some people who held me to a higher standard than maybe I was holding myself. So look, we see it. You might be pretending not to know, but we see you. I realized I was running from something, not towards something. So the investment has been to understand what was the motive? What was I afraid of? What was the conditioning? And if I could come to understand it, which has led to where we are today, maybe it's not just me. Maybe many of us are programmed a certain way that with a chance to look at it, to realize, hey, how to use it as a force for good, as a gift, as opposed to there's something wrong with you. So I would say the ongoing commitment to put money into my development, but not for me to say, hey, Jonathan, look what I've done it was one time on Success Mountain where it was to get up there and go, hey, look at me. It, it's to get up the mountain to see what I couldn't see when I was down here caught in my ego. I think, are there more people that maybe I could touch or influence, not keeping score if they ever know? And I will tell you, the more I've learned about me, <laughs> it's less scary than I thought it would be, but there's a lot more to learn. And I don't think anybody knows us better than we know ourselves if we're willing to look at it. And so maybe it's cliche and maybe people say that, but my own experience has paid great dividends. I hear you talking about awareness and programming. And was it those mentors who told you, hey, I see you a certain way? Was it the way you were feeling? I liken it to the matrix when he wakes up and he realizes he's in this other world. And so what was that wake up moment for you? Would have been this tribe of individuals, leaders in this group called YPO, Young Presidents Organization, maybe familiar to your audience. And what was interesting about being part of that group I qualified, but probably I was the sympathy case. They let me in, had me do all the work, carry the bags. And what I've learned is the only person to compete with is yourself because someone's always got something that you might think better, bigger, stronger, faster. What was great about the discussion, as hard as it was, I saw a model represented in certain individuals who demonstrated, whose life experience demonstrated, one could have a successful business, a family, life experiences, deep relationships, ongoing learning, maybe a spiritual quest that they were on, in that my conditioning and upbringing, the memorized association of the way the world is, given how I was programmed or how I accepted programming, however it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when my audio tape went from record to play, I thought it was work and or relationships in my model of growing up. Well, it's always work. You can't have both. So that explains leading a little bit to the divorce. But there were credible people who'd done amazing things who said, look, we see you better than you see yourself. Look, you're pretending not to know, but BS. And they did it out of care and concern. And it was pretty hard because I have come to find out that, right, wherever you go, that's where you are. And that I saw in them and learned for me that I was really 100% responsible for what was going on in my life. That means I had to put away the blame thrower. <laughs> <laughs> <was> an <laughs> that made me grumpy and yet gave me some agency or power that I didn't know I possessed. And I realized that I couldn't compete with these guys on metrics that I thought success was. Maybe I could put down the business card that I was hiding behind right, and open up and say, okay, maybe the best leaders are the best students. I got a lot to learn here. Yeah. I can tell you've done a lot of work. <laughs> I can, I, no, I get it because I know the feeling, I know the cynicism, I know the blame, I know all of that. I think a lot of us resonate with it, but then there's that awareness because I can tell the humility and the introspectiveness and I can see the work that you have done. Kudos to you, brother. I respect that so, so much. So let's have some fun. What are some bad recommendations you hear in your area of expertise? Start drinking heavily. <laughs> <laughs> which would not advise. And often. <laughs> I think what I have been reminded of, and maybe we're allured to, or I see I had been allured to, you know, the quick fix, the hack, the two or three steps, there's an easier way. And I haven't had that experience. 
I think there are some adaptations we can make to give us more energy or more juice for how we play the game. And I don't know, I haven't met anybody who hasn't carved it out by really being all in and maybe further. And Jonathan, I suspect you have this the way you come across is I think all of us have felt the benefit of man having left it all on the field really done something no, almost no matter the result. I don't mean that's not important, but man, I gave it. I gave it my best. Now, maybe tomorrow I'll look back at today. I could have done something different today. I realized you can't do any better than your best. And so what I'm um, <laughs> happy to know is tomorrow, I'm sure I'm going to look back today and say, if only I said this to Jonathan, but I'll treat myself as my best friend arm around the shoulder and say, hey, dude, you gave it the best you could at the moment as he asked you. And I didn't have to memorize a script because I want in the work I'm doing in the life I lead something to come out of language that speaks to someone that hits them the way so many things have hit me to say, wow, I didn't see it till I saw it. I hope something like that comes out of this discussion for people on that side of the screen. I hope they give you credit for it. Just I'm basking in that right now. Let me just enjoy it for a second. It's <laughs> supposed to be fun, man. And you're basking. Come on. back. Uh, to, back to uh, get, get back to work. <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, so a couple things. Number one, I've been working on our mission and my purpose here at the podcast factory. And you've nailed it. Right words to the right person at the right time can change a life. And that's what we're doing at scale. And so I want to tell you that we're comrades in that, and I'm grateful to be on the journey with you and perhaps even part of your personal legend. So moving forward. Now we're about to get into your favorite part of the show where we talk about results. But first, I've got to ask you, are you picking up what we're laying down here? I hope so. That's why we do the show every week. And I want to ask you for a little bit of help. If there's someone out there that you think can benefit from this show, why not share it with them? Put it out there, hit the share button, use hashtag results leader FM and get it out there. Now let's jump back into the interview. Let's talk about results. Why do results matter? A couple of things come to me as you ask the question. I had had the framework for, for many, many years that a focus on results would bring me results only to be needing the blame thrower <laughs> referred to early <laughs> or be so minutely focused or put another way, you know, if you had a funnel there in the kitchen, I'd look through the large end to the small end, really trying to nail something only to come to learn is, yeah, you might, but there might be collateral damage along the way, or I might miss something in my quest to achieve. So my perspective now is it's yes, the results matter, but it's the behaviors, the actions, the discussions you have that will accumulate, accumulate. So results matter to me from the perspective of whatever the outcome is, I know that there's something I can engage to modify my actions and behaviors such that if I want a different set of results, intellectually, intuitively, experientially, I know then there's some new approach that I ought to take or do more of something, less of something or none of something. So results matter from the perspective of, I think the best we can hope for in life for me, Jonathan, is progress. There are lots of metrics, but at the end of the day, whenever that is, and hopefully it's a long time away, there's no first place. <laughs> hey, he did it or she did it. I think it's first place as we define it. And to know that we're using our gifts and our talents, and as you are clearly doing, try to make an impact words or language that we help someone get better or get closer to it, then man, that's the quest. So results matter to say, okay, based on that outcome, if I'm going to take 100% responsibility, I know I could pivot this, shift this, or if I don't know how to do it, that's not as important as knowing who has already done it. <laughs> so I like from, I look more for who's than how's. So it lets me know that, okay, my on path, off path, on path, off path, as long as you don't move the fences out on me. Too good. Let's think back over the last five years, what new realization has helped you get better results for your clients? So in a lot of work around what is called executive coaching, leadership development, leadership training, I can tell you that maybe prior or leading into that five-year patch you asked me about, I would spend a fair amount of time trying to carve my words out thinking if it, I'm trying to make it land for somebody on the other side of the audience of the screen or what have you. And I came to the realization of, I'm pretending I know what these people are thinking. I don't even know what I'm thinking all the time. <laughs> so I'm twisting myself looking for a response and somebody might look grumpy or somebody might look happy. And they're probably thinking of something else that's got nothing to do with me. Learning the hard way <laughs> or being the only guy at the podium when the room empties and you're still the only guy there, right? <laughs> so nobody was gripped by what you had to say. And it then coming back to that growth and personal development side of things said, okay, dude, 
if you think you've got something, then bring it. Because if you're doing it for them and not for yourself, whoever's going to get it is going to get it. And whoever isn't, okay. That's statistically, what are you going to get? 90 people in the audience, 30 are glad that you're there, 30 just want to can't understand why you're even in the room with them. They just want to go back to work. And then the swing voters in the middle that you might get some of them (laughs) if your words work. So what I have come to realize is for me, and maybe for those that have a willingness to consider it or test drive it, the realization is maybe it's you, maybe it's me. We often spend a lot of time with people like, where are you? Where do you want to go? In that game of current self is often spoken of as future self. Paint that picture. What's it look like? Take me onto the movie set. Part of the paradox for me in the work is, well, that's terrific. But unless you know where you're starting from, you're going to be pissed off at the gate agent because you got on the wrong flight, right? <laughs> you're at the wrong gate. And so the hard look at where I am is really, really important to be open to that 360 view, not to believe everything I hear from other people, but I can't keep score for myself. I often then have the recognition of, well, I'm not going to arrive here. Like today, you and I didn't arrive here. We lived into it day by day by day by day by day by day by day. So what tweak do I need to make? If this is where I want to be, then tomorrow morning, I've got to pivot this. Maybe tonight before bed, I got to do this. Maybe this conversation with my son has to happen. So the realization is maybe it's me. Somebody will engage me or I'll engage somebody and say, I'm not getting the results I want. And this isn't working. And that's not going on. Okay, well... If the person's doing what I'm looking for, they're going to hold the mirror up to me and say, look at it from that angle, dude. Ooh, (laughs) it is me. (laughs) And while that might sting a bit, if it's me, I can do something about it. May not know what to do, but I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of people who are far smarter than me that maybe they'll give me some insights. Man, what I hear the recurring theme here is this ownership of yourself. And I heard it in the results talk where we control our inputs. We don't control the output. And really, I'm with you. I feel like that is the ultimate gift. When you realize that you have control of you, the whole world opens up. And so I love this conversation. I can go on forever, but I got to stick to the script. So let's talk about you and your business. What area of your business would you like better results? Well, the good news about that question is you can attack in any direction. And I don't mean from the standpoint of have to have a specific result at a specific time, although we all look at forecasts and modeling. I think areas of improvement are all around me. I will tell you all the time, I really grok with, am I bringing my best? The best engagements I have are the people that really make me think, man, do I have something for this individual? Is there a word I can use? Can I offer something? And those are really stimulating. Those are powerful for me. I don't appreciate, and maybe you asked me sort of the question earlier, how I see some advice coming from other individuals in this space. I don't think there's a how to one, two, three uh, formula for any of us. Look, there's certain things, you know, get your sleep right, eat good, right? Consider who you're surrounding yourself with. But to your exact point, so my input is going to affect my outlook and my outlook is going to affect my output. So I guess what you're getting for me consistently, as long as I'm learning and growing, there's always something I can improve. Now that let's say the pandemic, there was a pandemic, wasn't there? There is still one or whatever. Was that it a bad dream? <laughs> what is that? I, I'm not disappointed to tell you that I forgot how to get to the airport. And that was pretty cool. However, what burns inside of me, Jonathan, is a belief that I'm supposed to do something with the gift I've been given virtue of the early conditioning that when I was told I had nothing to contribute, I was to go through earth school to know that that was, there was an actually a flip side to that, that there was the pressure test. And no, man, you have got the gift of language. Now it doesn't mean you're great at it, but you got, if you keep applying the polish, then you'll be able to do something to influence other people. So I say that knowing if my sons are going to introduce me on podium one day as I may become a dresser tribe. I want them to say that he helped light, gave them permission, helped them see, light the torch, not because it was him, but because it was them. That somebody had to did something that they might not have otherwise done because they heard something, felt something, saw something, had permission to do something. And so there it leads me back to as well, I want to put some energy back into the speaking platforms, which would mean away from home, seminars in the workshops, right? More book writing. It isn't because I want you to know about me. It's because I want people to know what's inside of them. And I, man, it follows me like a shadow. And if you've ever had a shadow in your life, (laughs) they tend to stay with you no matter what the weather is. What results are you most proud of? Aside from this podcast. And this (laughs) and. (laughs) Yeah, man, that's a great one. So what is it we hear when the sand is to run out of our hourglass? We're not going to look around and say, where are my trophies? Where are my pictures? Where's my whatever? I have learned maybe that divorce was part of it. I'm heartened by the fact that 
I've had people engage with me in this work for a long time, 10, 12 years, and have given me the opportunity to continue to develop and concurrently develop with them. And I'm fortunate and, and probably over-indexed on that, that I'm scared to step out of my boundaries. I don't know, it's one or the other. To have now the benefit of a, a second opportunity to have a full committed relationship and 15 or 16 years that are inv- invested in that. Two amazing kids that, I don't know, because of cash, whatever it is, but still love me, <laughs> still engage me, still hug me as teenagers. Really proud of that. Team that's been with me eight or nine years, which would say that there's, maybe there's something here. Not And I would say as it comes to all of those individuals coming and ending here with team here for the moment is much like a client and a team member, what's in it for them is the radio station they're tuned into. So if I'm able to put around me folks that are far better than me in a lot of areas. <laughs> There's a lot of people in that room. But if those folks are doing what they're blessed at, gift at more often of the time, not eight, eight or 10 hours a day, but higher percentage of the time using their gifts, you know, then you go back, you got to kiss the frogs that you got to kiss as part of life. Then I don't have to motivate anybody. Motivation is hard. It's laborious. And if you do this, I'll give you that. But if you inspire me, if you speak to my spirit, to my soul, dude, I'm, we'll stay up all night tonight. Why? Because there's something bigger out there, not about us, about but like what you're doing here, it's not. I don't get the sense this is about you. This is how am I using my gift? What pebble am I throwing in the pond that's going to put the waves out there? So I guess the long answer to your question, which I have not learned the short version, is the people who've stuck with me. Epic. Any parting thoughts you'd like to share with the results leaders who are tuned into us right now? So if for those folks generous enough to give us what we can't give them back, which is time, right, by tuning in, I'd say if everything's practice, we spend a lot of time around professional athletes, you strike me as an athlete, or even if we watch athletes, what do athletes do? They practice and they practice and they practice and then they pivot and they practice and they pivot. So I would consider looking at the game of life in such a way that what am I going to practice to continue to you know, improve my craft. I mean, I think there's three things that we can always look to improving. If I simplify it by only three, because I am a simple man, Jonathan, we can work on our body, our mind, and our craft. Those three incorporate everything. And if I habitually work on, do I know what I'm looking to accomplish? Have I set some objectives? Do I know what behaviors would require? And can I look at my life in a day? And my view of it is your day is your life in miniature. And if I look at these like Legos, and if I just stack those for the kids, kick them over, that I might get some victories here if I can get four out of seven days. So I would say have a ritual, the way you approach each and every day. For me, I bookend it. It's got to start a certain way. It's got to end a certain way. And there's two or three non-negotiable things I try to squeeze in the middle. Those can be pretty good days. Stack the days, be open to pivot, to test some things. And maybe lastly, pressure test that against what you believe your purpose is. I think that word is maybe sometimes it may be tossed around a little bit too easily as as many words can be. I'll tell you what I mean. As you have asked this of me, I think, and I don't know because I don't know who's keeping score. (laughs) I don't know what the results are. Someone's keeping score. I think I'm closer to being on purpose more often than not, like anybody get distracted, right? And that for me is something that's incredibly meaningful to me. You can't give it to me. I can't give you yours. It's bigger than me and it's always future oriented. So I'm striving towards it. I've got that vision of what life looks like as I live into that. Your actual mileage may vary and the objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, but I pretty much know what that looks like. And then I've got to come back each and every day, say, am I stacking those Legos each day that are going to have me live into that? Because today I've lived into everything I've done up to this point. And while I might stop and look and say, well, I ought to be someplace else. Well, Jonathan, it can't be any different because it's not. And if I'm responsible, then I can do something different. But it's not a hard right hand turn. It's incremental. And maybe much like athletes, because I know business people, if, if part of your community, I suspect, has got business people, entrepreneurs, if you will. That what I've learned in working with athletes and, and business people and myself is business people redline it really hard for the most part. It's just one more all nighter. And I I get that. But if I look at the performance of athletes, one of the things that they remind me of is they do something pretty unique. They recover, leaning really hard. And someone say, well, they have the money, this and that. I don't know. Not all those athletes start that way. (laughs) The hungriest have been through some difficult moments. So then I would add recovery, the body, the mind, the soul to put alkaline back in the batteries. I think I have been reminded far too often, I can't give my best unless I'm at my best. And and sooner or later, if I keep dialing my cell phone, it's going to run out of juice. I'll be mad at Apple and they probably won't take my call. (laughs) They won't. (laughs) You have to go through the chat bot, but that's besides the point. Brother, I know our listeners are going to want more from you. Where can we go? Well, thank you. We've got a big barbecue this weekend. I'm in. 
Perfect. Now I got to give you misdirection. Yeah. Thanks. As maybe shows up, however, your communication goes to your audience, the uh, website, James McPartland, and hopefully you'll lay that out. This, uh, I even misspell it sometimes. JamesMcPartland.com. Similar handles right on, on some of the channels. The Unopened Gifts book would be on Amazon, or you know, you could reach out to team at James McPartland. If you've got questions, we've got resources, happy to help expand your community because you gave me a gift today and hopefully I can multiply it and give it back. Relationship is a place I go to give, right, man? So you got to let me know somewhere down the road what I can do for you. It has been terrific spending time with you. Thank you for sharing with us, James. And thank you, Results Leaders, for tuning in. Another show is in the can. That is a wrap for another edition of ResultsLeader.fm. If you are out there getting results for your clients and you want to be featured on the show, go to resultsleader.fm now and apply to be on the show. And if you love what you're hearing, share the show, give us a rating and review, do anything to help us get the message out there. Thought leadership is easy, but results leadership is hard. We'll catch you on the next one. This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com.